Welcome to the 2021 CU Leadership Conference. As you can see right now, it's all virtual, so it's reimagined, but we're excited to have you here with us as we discuss the topic of resolute. To be resolute means to be determined, to be purposeful, to be unshakable, to be unwavering. So it is important as we explore this, first of all, to hear from others. So I'm excited to be able to let you meet a couple of my friends and hear their story on how they have had to be resolute over the last year. We're excited that you're with us. We hope you enjoy the CU Leadership Conference for 2021. We've been given a great opportunity, and I think a lot of times we look at crisis as, a, as something that we need to be like, oh my goodness, that's so bad. And yes, we need to acknowledge the bad in the crisis, but we need to look at it as an opportunity. And that's the mindset and the perspective that I believe that God has for us out of James chapter 1, where Paul tells us to look at trials as, as a good thing, that they, they produce perseverance and then that perseverance works its way so that God can make us more into the image of his son and I think one of the ways that we can do that is to be resolute and remember what it means to be resolute is to be determined to be purposeful to be unshakable and to be unwavering so what I have the opportunity to do now I have the honor and the privilege to introduce to you a former colleague of mine Mojadi Adi Jokim. She is a graduate of Cedarville University. She's the former vice president of the Student Government Association here, and she's a current grad student at Southwestern Baptist Theological Seminary in Fort Worth, Texas. So, Mojadi, welcome to, to CU Lead 2021. Can you tell us a little bit about what's been going on in your life before we start the interview? Yeah, absolutely. So as you guys heard, I am a current grad school, grad student at Southwestern University here in or seminary in Fort Worth, Texas. So I am getting my master's in divinity and women's studies in hopes of doing ministry in the church. Um, I am currently actually working on campus as a uh, women's ministry assistant in our women's center. So pretty much it's a lot of baking, a lot of conversations with girls, a lot of encouragement and cleaning the house as well, but just kind of we do everything, but the goal is just to love on the girls on our campus and make sure that they're able to build relationships. And then um, for me, things that I do on my own free time, first of all, it's homework. Really, I don't know if I have free time. I feel like even in high school or in college, you kind of know it's always homework or different things that you have to do for school. But when I actually randomly have free time. I really love to um, hang out with friends at a coffee shop. I have some friends that work there and we'll just sit and laugh and joke around and talk to the customers. So I think I'm like bringing in money for them. I don't know. I'm probably not, but pretty much just hanging out and making sure that we're laughing. So that's what I like to do for my free time. Well, Majati, you were a you were a blessing when you were here as a student. You always made life a lot of fun in the office, and mm -hmm. students still remember you. Uh, if <laughs> if they're a current student now, you were the fresh you were the vice president their freshman year. So, a couple questions I want to ask you right now. First one is like, why is it important to be resolute? And and I know we were talking just a little bit a little bit mm -hmm. ago before we came on is that resolute's a word we don't use a lot. Yeah. But why is it important to be determined, to be purposeful, to be unshakable, to be unwavering? Why, in your in your personal words, why is that important? Yeah. So um, I so I whenever you asked me to do this, um, you said, "Hey, like, what's resolute?" And I actually had to go on Google and look it up. And one thing that I loved about it is that it called it being admir admirably purposeful. Um, so what I think is so important about being resolute is. Um, whenever you have a purpose, you're able to achieve something. Whenever you go through life without a perfect purpose or kind of an idea of what's next, you kind of just floating and doing a little bit of this and a little bit of that, of that and you kind of aren't um, focused or doing anything. And something that I have been learning this year is the importance of everything that I do, no matter if my plans have changed or anything, like it needs to be done in hopes of glorifying the Lord. Mm. That all that I need to do is not just for myself or for the betterment of me, but it's to glorify the Lord and love others. 
So I always got this mixed up, the four core um, things of Cedarville. I always get the last two wrong, but luckily I don't have to say them, but loving God and loving others is so important. And whenever we are resolute, we're able to do those two things so well. In fact, we're actually able to do all four, have integrity and conduct and excellence and effort. Is that? That's the you, one You are saying. right on. You got it right. <laughs> so yeah. So being able to do all four of those four core um, values here at Cedarville, you have to be resolute. You need to know kind of where your values are and what your purpose is, kind of what your dreams are as well. Like what do you want to do? How do you achieve it? Um, not just kind of going through life, floating along, because you'll look back and be like, okay, what have I done for the past few days? I mean, I don't know about you guys, but in the midst of like, whenever we're all really stuck at home, not doing anything and everything kind of stopped, like work wasn't happening, classes weren't happening. Everyone's like, let's figure this out for a week. I was just watching Netflix. And I remember looking at the end of the week and being like, great, what did I do? Like, I just felt like I was floating along, ordering things on Grubhub and just like watching TV. But whenever I'm focused, like, okay, here are my goals. Here are things that I want to achieve long term, short term, short term, and all of these other things. I'm able to um, like really accomplish those things. And that all goes with being resolute. Like you're being admirable and recognizing that you always need to have a purpose and being steadfast and always pushing forward in those things. So I think that's an important that's what's important about being resolute. Well, that that's really great. I love that. I, and to, to be honest, when we first picked the topic, I had to go to Google as well. So props to Google right now. Um, <laughs> so my, my second question is, I mean, this last year has been um, ups, downs, you know, some joys. And, and there's always good in, in every trial. You know that. But how have you really had to be resolute like this year with with everything that's gone on in our world and in our country and you know, like just talk about that like how's that experience been for you yeah wow this past honestly it's crazy to think that in this past year so much has happened and yet we're still in this year it has been a long thing year that it'd be so easy for me to want to be like constantly changing and moving like one of the biggest ways that I know that I've had to be resolute is by not quitting school. Cause a little part of me wanted to just like, okay, I'm gonna take the year off while the world figures itself out and go home and take naps and watch Netflix and do absolutely nothing. But I came to school, I was called to come here to get this degree so that I can go serve in the church. And I had to be resolute in that decision and in that dream and in those, um, those next steps. So me sticking it out here has had is a reason to be resolute. And I'm not sure this is quite a resolute, but I'm making it resolute for me. I'm defining resolute in this way. But one of the things that I've had to do is just finding a good community hmm. to speak into my life. Um, so for me, this season has not only been hard because of COVID, but everything like um, all of the things that have been going on in our country, racial injustice, and it's a um, voting year and all this other stuff. It's just bringing out honestly, an ugly side of everybody. Like we're recognizing that whenever we don't see eye to eye on every single thing, we feel like we must fight through it all. And I've had to be resolute in the decision of, okay, even if I don't agree with people 100%, that does not mean I show them hate or I disagree with them. Well, I do disagree with them, but doesn't mean that I can't be friends with them, that I have to cut them off immediately because we don't see eye to eye on these situations. Um, but also it, it made me resolute and I have to be willing to be vulnerable with people even when I don't agree with them. But then also finding safe people to talk to, to be like, hey, this is happening and I feel this way. Help me like handle this, help encourage me onto the next step, help um, guide me, help, help lead me to continuing on, like be the person I can lean on that's like here, like help me make sure that I can move on like keep moving forward and i i feel like that's has been such an important thing is like the relationships and relationships and resolute we'll start with ari so we're gonna put them together but i i just have seen that relationships have been so important in helping me be resolute and um continuing me in the whole mission of like running the race and being able to serve god and serve others and um, do what I need to do on this earth. So yeah, that's, I, I think those are like some like little things that I've had to do to be resolute is just like 
putting community around me and then um, just being willing to push forward even when it's hard, even if it is just a small step of, okay, I'm going to read three pages out of my 100 page chapter, like at least I did something or um, I'm actually going to watch my lectures or I'm not going to quit classes. I'm not going to quit school um, just because everything's hard. Like I'm going to keep doing steps, even if it doesn't seem any like anything big or major. And I think that's something also important to remember is um, we don't always have to have these major big steps and um, accomplishments happening all the time. I think we have this idea that um, that for us to be successful means that we have to be doing things that um, are big and flashy. And honestly, being resolute sometimes means um, sitting in those small victories of, I woke up this morning, I got ready, I didn't watch Netflix, I did my homework, and I texted my mom and let her know that I'm safe and I'm alive. And that's being resolute is just continuing on in that. So yeah, that is how I've had to be resolute in these past six months. So, you know, one of the things you said is the, the relationship side. And I think mm -hmm. that's very seen throughout scripture, how, you know, Jesus had disciples. He wasn't doing it alone. He, he even the God of the universe had people around him yeah. that he did life with. And I think that's really important. So uh, a question for you, uh, one of the last ones is, how is your relationship with the Lord um, grown? How is it, you know, I mean, like I can be honest and say, you know, there are times that getting up in the midst of COVID-19, it was like, I don't know if I really want to read my Bible today. Yeah. But, you know, how is that that relationship with God, your faith, your your worldview, you know, that God is God um, helped you through yeah. 2020? Yeah. Um, so I'll start off with how is my relationship with God grown? So one thing I learned is. We all say that thing of, if I had all the time in the world, I would do this, this, and this. And one of the things I'd always say is like, was, I'm going to spend hours in the Word. And I realized that when I do have all of the time in the world, I actually do not spend hours in, the, in my Bible. And I think the Lord utilized Corona and everything stopping just to kind of focus me on, hey, here's where your relationship with me is. Let's work on that. So I think... This season has been an eye-opening season for me and even friends around me of, okay, like, where is my relationship? Like, yes, my foundation is on Christ, but like the next levels of that house that I'm building on God, um, what does that look like? Is it like termite ridden and like not actually time in like the Bible and in prayer and um, even fasting and just living out some of the spiritual formation spiritual formational um, actions. Like I realized that, okay, I need to take time and really figure out what my relationship with God is. But something else that has been so good is that the Lord not only has been using this to teach me, but he's been just so kind. Um, and even the little things of like, I still had my job throughout Corona. Like my boss bent over backwards to make sure that we had things to do so that we could still be employed. And um, he did place people at the right time with the right things, with the right um, Zoom calls and game nights over Zoom at the right moments. But um, without a doubt, had I not known, had I not, had I not been paying attention to the promises and the ways that the Lord has come through in the past, I'm not sure. I feel like I probably would still be, but it wouldn't be as good, like mm -hmm. my relationship with him now. Like looking back at the past and knowing that he called me to women's ministry helped encourage me to keep going on in school like that's why I was able to be resolute in that decision of continuing my education um knowing that he's come through in other seasons I know last semester for finals week I did not know if I was going to get things in I hadn't looked at some of my classes the entire like month that we were in our houses I'm going to be very honest sorry professors but um I, I somehow, some way, the Lord was not only able to help me make it through those finals, but also launch me into some summer classes and all of those things. So um, I think I've just recognized, first of all, what I'm giving to my relationship with the Lord, but then also how he continues to be faithful and how he continues to work and how he's not surprised in the season and that he has us and he pays attention to us. Um, recently, I think it was in a song or somebody was saying it, um, it, it talks about how um, how God is the God of the universe and he's so big, but yet he still knows our name. Like he knows us personally. 
Like he he recognizes all of these things, but still he pays attention to who we are and where we're at and what we need. And I just think that's so encouraging. So the Lord has just, I think it's just been another reminder of God just showing me who he is and how I need to cling on to that and continue to grow in that relationship and finding purpose in him. Yeah. God is so faithful. I mean, it's yes. even when we're not faithful, it's like the, the book of Hosea where, you know, that whole example of God pursues us relentlessly and he's so good and i appreciate you sharing your heart there so one last question and i, I love this question so you've got to go back to 2010 so this <laughs> is majority of 2020 talking to majority of 2010 what would be something that you would say to 2010 majority knowing that 2020 is going to happen we don't know what the future holds we don't know what 2021 holds or what 2022 holds but if you could go back to 2010 majority and say hey you need to be this to be resolute because i know that this is coming what would you tell her so i actually talk i don't talk to my younger self a lot because that, that's not that's impossible when i talk about my younger self i call her baby majority Cause like baby majority made mistakes and she, she was, she was growing. We're glad what happened there, but whew, we, whew, it was a time, but something I would say to my younger self, baby majority um, is first of all, don't buy Netflix. Like it will waste <laughs> your time. Please just like, don't spend your money on it. You'll save a ton of money. You'll save so much time. Um, maybe borrow your friends every once in a while, but you really don't need it. You need your time instead. But honestly, I can't really change that. But the biggest thing, very seriously, what I would tell myself to do um, is make sure that my foundation, make sure that your foundation in God is very solid. Make sure that your time in the word is a very consistent and natural thing so that whenever life does shake you up and the whole world shuts down and nobody knows what's going on and nobody leaves their houses thinking that if they step outside of their door, they're going to catch Corona in like five seconds. Like it feels like Armageddon was happening. Um, your relationship with God and the things that you do to continue to strengthen that relationship is just a natural thing. So back then um, it wasn't a priori priority for me to be in the word and um, doing certain things that I needed to do to continu continue to strengthen my relationship with God. But I wish I had been encouraging myself. I wish I had been because then now I would be resolute whenever things were coming and whenever things were happening, um, those things would never be changing because it was just a natural thing of, I always do this and this is a habit. And it's something that I feel weird if I'm not doing. So that's what I would tell my younger self is make those things natural like make that a habit that you do then so that when it comes to this time that thing's natural so for the high schoolers that are listening this is a perfect time for you to make your quiet time a priority or your time in prayer a priority and making it natural because in the future or right now actually you're probably thinking i don't have enough time i have i don't know if people are doing sports if you're doing sports I have sports, I have homework, I have classes. And the thing is, is as you get older, you're always busy. So you just need to make it a priority now so that it be, continues to be a priority once you get older. So yeah. that's what I would tell my younger self. And that's what I'm telling you guys as you're listening. Let me tell you, that's something I need to hear all the time. And I'm sure you need to hear as well. So Majati, thank you for taking the time tonight to be on this, uh, this Zoom call with us. Yeah. And I, guys, I really hope that you've heard her heart. I hope you've heard that she loves the Lord. She's seen that her God is faithful and she's given us this 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 um, encouragement to make that a priority, make that a habit now, because the older you get, the harder habits get to make. So Majati, thank you again. It's been a blessing to see you as your friend, but also just to hear how God is working in your life and how you are staying resolute. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you for having me. During difficult times, you're squeezed or you're stretched. And the saying is when you're squeezed and you're stretched, what's inside comes outside. 
And that's really important for us to understand. And that's why we are going through the idea of being resolute. Because being resolute is determined, it's purposeful, it's unwavering, and it's unshakable. And I get the opportunity right now to introduce you to another friend, a former colleague. She is a former student, a graduate of Cedarville University, and now she is a set decorator for Walt Disney Imagineering in Orlando, Florida. I'm really excited to welcome Kristen Ziegler to our interview today. So Kristen, tell us a little bit about yourself before we get into the questions. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, Brian. So yeah, as Brian already said, my name is Kristen Ziegler. Um, I currently work for Walt Disney Imagineering and I'm based um, in the Orlando, Florida area. So I live in Kissimmee, Florida. Um, came down here about six years ago now to work for Imagineering. Started um, as an intern and um, was very excited and thankful to be offered the opportunity to work um, here full time. Um, close to Walt Disney World, um, have been able to work on several projects, um, some in the parks here at Walt Disney World, some at Disneyland, um, and currently my most recent project actually revolves around um, Disney Cruise Line. And so just very thankful that God brought me here. Um, not only did he bring me um, to my workplace here, but also brought me to Celebration Community Church, which is a church that I go to um, here in Florida. And um, I also met my husband there, Ellis. Um, so extremely thankful for that. We've been married two years now. Um, he also works for Disney. So Disney is a huge part um, of our family and what we do and a huge um, place we're able to serve as well. Well, Kristen, one of the things that we want to talk about today and the students are going to hear us talk about throughout this, this conference is the concept of resolute. And I don't know about you, the word resolute is not something that I use in normal conversation. So I actually had to go look it up. So like, I don't know if that was you, but when we define resolute, we're looking at somebody or a, a group that is determined, they're purposeful, they're unshakable and they're unwavering. Why is the idea, the concept of resolute important to you? Yeah, absolutely. So um, yeah, thinking about the word resolute, I actually had to do the exact same thing is a word that I'm not tossing around every day. So I had to go through and actually look into, okay, what does this word really mean? Um, and growing up, I've always been a fairly determined person. Um, I wasn't one necessarily to give up on something. I like to persevere, but I think it really challenged me and thinking of the word resolute to think about what am I resolute about? Um, because I think you can be very determined and very purposeful and very unwavering in the wrong things as well as in the right things. So that was kind of my first thought is, hey, what am I actually resolute in? So it kind of made me do a heart check thinking about this word. Um, but as we all know, circumstances change, the world changes, things that we thought were sure yesterday may not seem so sure today, especially in the world that we're living in right now. Um, we're all experiencing this to an extent. Um, but I think I'm thankful for the fact that as Christians, we build our lives on someone whose purpose will stand, um, who is has a plan for our life. Um, he's in charge of the past, the present, and the future. He is unchanging, and his character is unwavering, and that's God. We know that. So as Christians, um, it's important to be resolute because we have a God that um, has given us the grounds to be resolute. Um, he's solid. He's a rock. He's our firm foundation. Um, and I think it's important to have kind of grow this character quality, even from the time you're young. You think of riding a bike. You know, if you get on a bike, you go to ride it, you fail probably multiple times the first few times you try. Maybe you even physically injure yourself. But if you just gave up and didn't ride a bike, like, man, how much would you miss in life if you just gave that up? Or I even think back to high school. There's many times maybe I tried out for a spring musical or varsity sports team, or tried for that academic honor and fell short, didn't quite make it. That's an opportunity either to sulk and be depressed and be sad. And don't get me wrong, there were definitely times when I did that. But there's also opportunities that we can take these things that maybe we fall short or these experiences in our life, these circumstances, um, and use those to learn and to grow and say, okay, maybe God doesn't want me to go down this avenue, but he wants to be me to be re resolute and being faithful to him and following him. And he wants to use me in a different um, outlet. Um, I also just think about even my career right now. Um, I know this is kind of a long answer, but kind of going from childhood all the way up to my career. Um, and yeah, really right now, um, the world, you know, is kind of shut down and closed in a way due to what we're going through um, with COVID in my company in particular, we're experiencing um, a lot of change. Um, for a lot of people, some pain and just transition, um, even seeing things like furloughs and layoffs in a career. Um, and it's easy to think, wow, what do I do now? How do I persevere? How, how am I resolute? How do I keep going in this? Um, but really kind of this whole opportunity to think about this word 
um, Resolute has shown me that if I let my circumstances and my emotions guide me and sway me in life, it's going to be all over the place like a roller coaster and not a fun roller coaster, <laughs> but a, uh, but a bad roller coaster really. And so, um, it can be extremely challenging to be resolute, but I've been reminded that even in disappointing circumstances or sad circumstances or changing circumstances that, um, God is my resolute foundation. And, um, yeah, if I'm pursuing him, um, in my dreams, in my career, in my home, in my family, in my church, um, that ultimately, even when I do fail, I know that God has a purpose and that ultimately I will succeed and that I can glorify him in whatever outlet that he's given me or has me do. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, that's that's a, a great answer and a great segue into um, just my next question. You know, in February, end of February, uh, my family was was with you, with Ellis, with your parents down at Disney World. And then within two weeks, you know, COVID-19 really um, hit our country and then, you know, the park started shutting down. And then I, 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 I would really like you to hear if you would be willing, um, yeah. like them to, to hear from you. Um, you know, you talk about furloughs now and layoffs now, but that furlough happened to you um, yeah. this summer. So what was, what was that like? And even thinking about the idea of Resolute, you know, what was that like going through that you know, here's a place that you've wanted to work your entire life. Well, maybe not when you were a little kid, but but the, your remembering life. Yeah, uh, this is sure. where you wanted to work and you were there. And within a few short weeks, you know, you're, you're getting that phone call. Like most people that worked at the at, at Walt Disney saying, hey, we're going to have to furlough you for the time being. What was that like? Not seeing the end in sight, wondering yeah. when that was going to happen. What was it like to and why was be the idea of being resolute important at that time. For sure. So yeah, I think when I first got the call that, um, yeah, it was a call in an email that our world is changing. Our company has to take measures in order to sustain itself during these unprecedented times. Um, yeah, it was a little shocking. Um, there was kind of, I don't know, I would say, a comfort of knowing like there's a lot of other people going through the same thing. And there was a lot of people that I could talk to about at this same time. Yeah. It was kind of like, man, this was, this has been my dream. This has been my goal. And at first I don't think I really realized as a lot of us did how lasting this would be or um, how large of an impact it would be. But soon I found myself, this wasn't just two weeks off. This wasn't just three weeks off. Weeks started turning into months. Um, and yeah, it was, it was very different. It was something that was unexpected, kind of like, a large unexpected and unwelcome summer break. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, it came up suddenly. Um, so I had two choices during this cause I could definitely choose to be bitter. Um, was there some disappointment? Yes, but I could choose to be, you know, bitter over this and use my time unwisely, or I could choose to see this furlough that God gave me as again, an unexpected gift. When else in my life will I have this dedicated time outside of work? Um, to focus on other things, focus on him, focus on um, my husband, focus on, uh, yeah, just other things that he's given me in that time. And so I definitely had to have an, a heart check. Um, I've said in the past, I've said this to Cedarville students even before, um, that your identity is not in your career. It can't be. It's not in a job. And God gave me this opportunity to really practice what I preach. Um, and it was harder. Um, it's easier said than done. Um, but I'm very actually thankful looking back um, on my time during furlough of that time that God gave me um, to think about how to serve him better, to be involved in things um, that I wouldn't have been otherwise to be able to um, build relationships and communicate with people during that downtime, um, even to encourage my coworkers um, during that time. I, I, I know Christ and I have this hope outside of my career, or my title or my position. Um, and a lot of my coworkers don't necessarily have that same hope. They don't believe um, in the same thing. They don't have God's word as a foundation. And so just being able to, um, in ways, you know, communicate with them via Zoom or email or phone call or whatever during that time, um, I think was a special gift. And so God definitely changed my mindset throughout furlough. It started out as, yeah, really this kind of scary, unknown, bad thing in my mind. Um, and now looking back at it, um, it was actually an unexpected gift. Um, so yeah, I am, I am back working now. Um, I got called back 
um, in late July. And so I'm back at work, but again, just very thankful for that time that God intentionally took me away from my job um, to focus in a deeper way on him. Kristen, you just mentioned about encouraging um, coworkers and we're yep. all going to have people in our lives, coworkers that are not going to have the hope that we have, the hope mm -hmm. of the gospel, the hope of knowing one day Jesus has everything under control. Um, yep. And in recent days, um, uh, Disney has gone through major cuts. And uh, I know that I was texting you and uh, you said, pray for my team because you were losing a, a good portion of your team. Um, how is that, you know, still forced you to be resolute and giving you opportunities maybe um, to encourage people that maybe that have been in the job 10 years and now, you know, they're looking for different options. And we know that change is a part of life. And James 1 says that trials are not necessarily bad. They're just direct God directing us. But how do you, how have you been able to take this opportunity, you being back and, you know, and the excitement of that, but then also now in the last couple of weeks, hearing friends, coworkers, people maybe you passed in the hallway now don't have a job. They're not just furloughed. They've been laid off. Right. Talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, there's a lot of mixed emotions in that. Um, it, yeah, it's bittersweet in a lot of ways because there's almost um, a strange guilt when you're back at work, but then half of your team is not. Um, and so that's been a challenge for me. That's something um, I've been praying about. Um, and yeah, talking to God about and seeing his word as far as how can I best be an encouragement um, to these different members of my team, especially in the position that I'm in. I'm not standing right next to them as someone who's you know, been laid off, but I'm standing with the, with a job. And so I just, I was concerned about that relational gap there, as far as, am I going to be able to, to encourage them kind of, you know, standing in this position. Um, but it's been good to talk to, um, each of them over the phone, um, have, you know, tears and have laughs. Um, but just be able to have some real conversations and just praying that, um, my coworkers do know what I believe. Um, they know that my hope is in Christ. They know that um, he is what I cling to and that, um, yeah, my identity is is not in my work, although I love my work, um, but I seek to do what I do to glorify him. And so um, just being able to, to live that out and explain that to my coworkers um, in a way um, and just encourage them in their next you know, career pursuits right now, it's all fresh right now. So a lot of people are really just searching and looking for answers. But I think as Christians, just being loving, being kind, being understanding, um, answering that phone call. I don't always want to answer that phone call when my coworkers are calling me. I don't know what to say. I don't know the right words, but praying that God would give me the right words to encourage them. And so I know I've faced that over the past couple of weeks. Just, I see the number come through. I'm like, I, I don't even know what to say to these people. Um, but yeah, just, praying that God continues to give me um, an outlet to share the gospel um, and just be a loving friend to each of them during that this time. Um, yeah, and just keeping my testimony throughout the whole thing, knowing that this isn't something that I did. Um, this is a gift that God's given me being at work and um, just as you know, freely as God gives me that gift, he can just as easily take that away. And so I think just having humility in that as well um, but anyway, yeah, yeah, so continue to pray for me in that because I need to continue, yeah, figuring yeah. out how to best my coworkers. Well, I appreciate your answer on that and the vulnerability there. Um, how has your relationship with God and your relationship with your Savior, Jesus Christ, helped you, you know, be that resolute that you, yeah, I, I've known Kristen, I've known you for a while now, and yeah. a word that would come to my mind for you is determined. Um, but how is your relationship with God through you know, moving to Florida, uh, then just in the last couple of years, Ella's coming into your life and then, yeah. um, but then going through what you've gone through in the last year and what you're even, you're, you're helping walk through with people. How has your relationship with the Lord um, grounded you? And what has that done to make you more resolute? Yeah, no, for sure. So mentioned this a little bit, I feel like at the beginning, but really my relationship with God, I feel like is the foundation for being resolute in the first place. 
um, again, in our ever-changing world and ever-changing circumstances, God's really the only thing, the only one that does not change. Um, and yeah, his character, his holiness, his love, it's something that we can cling to. And so um, I think just having that as a goal, I think about the world outside of Christ and the world will tell you a lot of things that sound very similar to being resolute. They'll tell you to never give up and to dream big and to keep working harder. But eventually all of those things outside of Christ are temporary and they are temporary things that will fade away. And so I think having my relationship with Christ again is really the foundation of being resolute in anything that I do. So even if I fail, which I will, um, at things in my life, I know that that Christ is there and he is my foundation. And again, I, I have a purpose. So it may not be a purpose in this specific career. It may not be a perf- purpose with this specific person or in this specific place, but God does have a purpose and a plan um, for those who love him. And um, God's faithful to me and I want to remain faithful to him because of that. And so, yeah, I think my relationship with God is foundational and being resolute. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, this is a fun question because now you, you kind of get the last word, but then I'll wrap it up. But uh, so you don't really get the last word. Um, so what would you say? Do you got to kind of imagine this a little bit? And I, I think as, a, as an imaginer, you might be able to do this. Um, what would you say to the, a, a Christian that is 10 years younger? So yeah. if I did the math correctly in my brain just a few seconds ago, uh, you graduated in 2013, um, so you would have been a freshman. 2014. 2014. Okay, she would have been a sophomore, so my <laughs> math was wrong. But what would you say to that freshman, that that um, sophomore Kristen, that yeah. you wish that you would have known back then, not knowing what 2020 held, because none right. of us did, but right. knowing, hey, hey, Kristen, you're going to need to be resolute what would you have liked to have been able to say to her? And, you know, this is your opportunity to speak to our, to our guests and to the people attending this conference. So what would you say to, our, to the younger Kristen? And what yeah. would you say to our, our guests that are with us today? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, if I had to give advice to younger Kristen and everyone else out there, um, I know one thing that I struggled with when I was younger, again, I've talked about this, but I've always been determined. Um, I feel like I've been resolute in things, but I would get so upset about not achieving certain goals. Um, And yeah, sometimes that was really disappointing in my life. And sometimes I feel like I did let that get the best of me instead of looking back to Christ and saying, okay, this was for a reason. How am I going to learn from this? How am I going to grow from this? How am I going to be able to lead and influence others better because of this and turning to him and then saying, okay, what path do you want me to go down next? And so, um, eventually he worked on me and I would do that in a lot of these situations. Um, but sometimes it took time. So I feel like I look back at myself and say, don't cling so tightly to these temporal things that I think are such a big deal. Be resolute, work hard, persevere, but again, if God wants the door to be open, he's He's going to open that door. Um, in that, I would also say, coupled with being resolute a lot of times um, is being patient. And so God has a timing and God has a plan for things. And being resolute means you're persevering, which means things in your life probably aren't happening just like that. They're going to take time. They're going to take work. God may have another experience he wants to put in your life before that dream or that passion that you're pursuing is going to happen. And so I think being patient in God's timing, um, I know even in college, yeah, there were opportunities. I've applied for a lot of Disney internships, speaking to my career and got a lot of no's, probably 40 or 50 no's before I finally got a yes. Um, and again, that that's you know part of perseverance and working hard, but that was God's perfect timing and open, opening the door for the right situation. Um, so that way I could be placed in the right job. Um, being able to minister to the right people in his perfect timing. So yeah, I would say don't don't cling so tightly to those temporal things. I know they're disappointing at the time, but God's plan is bigger. God's plan is better even mm. than our plan. Um, and in his perfect timing, um, he's going to work out those things. So yeah, don't cling too tightly to temporal things and be patient um, in your being resolute. Be patient. 